September 18th is 4 p.m. Can we please call the roll? Thomas Belter. Here. Jack Birmingham. Steve Pence. Here. Jason Lasky. Here. Sue Ponick. Archie Stam. Lori Palmieri. Here. Next, we'll move for um, consent to approve minutes August 13th and closed session August 13th. Mm -hmm. And a second on that. Move consent of the uh, agenda, uh, the, the minutes. Second. Any discussion? Anyone register to speak on that? Or anyone here to speak on consent? All right, please take the roll. Uh, just a voice vote. Voice vote. Boy, I cannot get that straight. <laughs> it's okay, it happens all the time. <laughs> Thanks. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Oops. All right, new business. Uh, first, we have a public Reading hearing. Ahead. Public hearing on spot blight designation 1124 High Avenue. Read that three times. All right. So again, uh, public hearing spot blight designation 1124 High Avenue. Third reading. Public hearing spotlight designation 1124 High Avenue. Do we have anyone here to speak from the public? All right. We'll close public comment. And I'll need a motion and a second on 1925 approved spotlight designation accept mm -hmm. donation of property at 1124 High Avenue. I'll move approval of 19 25 approving a spotlight. Designation and accepting a donation of the property, 1124 High Avenue. Second. <clears throat> any discussion? Price is right. <laughs> Are there any costs associated with the donation? Uh, there will be with some demolition demo. and tipping fee costs, and until we sell the lot, there will be some maintenance costs. And we'll also have minor closing costs. So maintenance, closing, and demo. Do we have an idea how much on demo? Uh, well, we're expecting the city crews to be able to take it down, it's but we still would have to uh, pay tipping fees, and that'll run $1,000. Uh, depending on what we find, I, we have an asbestos to go through, depending on what we find. Uh, ten to $15,000. Is that fire damage, or is that just deterioration? Uh, Could be both. <laughs> yes, actually had, both were occurring okay. on this property, but there was a fire recently as well. <laughs> Did you say last time that if the city would de demolish it, so it would be cheaper, but if you found asbestos, it could be more? Um, yes, there would be, a, if they find asbestos, they'll have to abate that as well. Um, and that city crews are not eligible to do, so we have a contractor that we work with on that. Okay, so your estimate is on the high side or? Um, it's on the high side uh, between 10 and 15. Okay. For everything. Okay, any further discussion on 1925? Okay, can you please call the roll? Felter? Aye. Pence? Aye. Lasky? Aye. Bonick? Aye. Will Aye. Motion carried 5-0. Next is 1926, approved land disposition of vacant lot on Frankfurt Street, $5,000. <coughs> Motion and a second on that. So I move, move approval of 1926. Second. My apologies. Do we have anyone here from the public to speak on that? Um, Pam, could you <laughs> go ahead? Here. Yes, thank you. Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods has purchased the property next to 83 Frankfurt I'm sorry, 87 Frankfurt. We had purchased 83 Frankfurt, um, and we are working with the Stevens Park Neighborhood Association to uh, rehab uh, and uh, try and uh, not only fix that property, the before picture of the day we closed on the property, exterior-wise uh, needs some work. Um, Interior-wise, uh, we've been pleasantly surprised uh, with hardwood floors underneath some uh, carpet and things like that. So we really think it's gonna be a very nice uh, uh, parcel in a neighborhood, but to make it uh, really work for everybody, purchasing 83 Frankfurt allows us to uh, 
reposition a garage so we would put up a new garage within uh, that property um, 83 uh, we would also then work with the corner lot which is uh, uh, 1124 Harney uh, his property line is right on his garage so uh, we would potentially be able to uh, move a lot line on that on both sides of the property in order truly to help the other neighbors as well um, one uh, concern that we do have with uh, 87 Frankfurt that we are purchasing is a large silver maple on a property line. Um, and I don't know who to ask that question. Uh, you own it right now as far as the uh, 80. Uh, seven Frankfurt property it is a very large si silver maple we're going to be able to move the garage up enough so that we the tree can stay but it should be brought up because it's very low hanging um, any recommendations <coughs> Ms. Brandt maybe <laughs> I will talk to you about that okay we'll see what we can work out okay okay would it make sense to talk to the city arborist? Because That's silver well maples done. tend to be the kind that fall down so, yeah. during high winds. <laughs> yeah, I'll work with Pam on that. Yeah, so w we think it's a win-win a uh, um, bringing this development together with the uh, 83 Frankfurt property and uh, mm -hmm. really making a, a very pleasant uh, backyard situation as well as a a nice uh, two-car garage for the property so yes we would be happy to per not happy to purchase it but I we think it's the right thing to do yes so um, my question is then would who would pay for the demolition with the RDA or if there is I'm sorry on that view and on uh, um, the view we, I we, have we there is no you already on. did okay yes. yeah That's yeah the there is created. no parcel on that property it, and with a width of 31 uh, feet it really isn't uh, buildable or something that m many developers would want to uh, try and uh, do something with I think this is really the only solution that's out there is uh, with the 83 Frankfurt property to take it on. Um, Ms. Brandt, how much do we have invested in the demolition then? I mean, I realize we don't recoup that, but just curious. Probably about seven hundred dollars. Oh, it was a small house. <laughs> 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 and City Cruise took it down. It yes. sounds like asbestos wasn't an issue. Um, that was just the demolition. Oh, yeah, there might have been some. So that was the tipping fees. Yeah, if there was any asbestos, it was minor. So. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right. Now, any further discussion on 1926? Okay, please call the roll. Belter? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Lasky? Aye. Connick? Aye. Flamary? Aye. Motion carried 5 0. Next, we have 1927. Approved land disposition of vacant lot 400 block of Boyd Street, $10,000. Is there anyone here to speak to 1927? <coughs> Okay. I'll move 19-27, approve land disposition. Second. Discussion. <coughs> Seeing none, can we please take the roll on 1927? Belter? Aye. Hintz? Aye. Lasky? Aye. Honick? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Motion carried 5-0. <coughs> And next is 1928, approve option to purchase vacant property on South Main Street between 7th Avenue and 8th Avenue, Jeff Fulbright. Anyone here to speak to that? Okay. 
Um, Madam Chairman, uh, we received an email earlier this afternoon regarding uh, 1929. Uh, Steiner asked to withdraw his offer to purchase. I wanted to bring that to the RDA's agenda. And Mr. Steiner said he was going to be at the meeting to explain the situation. I'm not sure we should take any action on 1928 or 1929 until we hear what's going on with Mr. There Steiner. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We had Perfect. just gotten to 1929 and 1928, and I was just telling the RDA that you had sent us an email withdrawing your offer, and we were waiting, awaiting to hear the explanation. Um, well, the, uh, well, say we're out of order on that. Yes. yes. So nine, let's stay on 1928. 1928 first. <laughs> um, is there anyone here that would like to speak to 1928? That is the approve option to purchase on the vacant property of south main street between 7th avenue and 8th avenue i'll make a motion to move 19-28 after 19-29 can i do that reposition the agenda okay second all right please take the roll or a voice vote on um, <clears throat> moving that out of uh sequence voice voter Lynn. Voice vote or vo voice vote or a roll call for changing order on agenda. We need a uh, roll call because it has to be a super majority. Thank you. All right. So we'll please take the roll. Belter. Aye. Hints. Aye. Lasky. Aye. Honick. Aye. Lamary. Aye. Motion carried five zero. Okay. So um, 1929 is approved offer to purchase vacant property on South Main Street between 7th and 8th Avenue, Bridgeview Holdings, LLC. And do we have someone here from the public to speak on 1929? Thank you. All right. Uh, you could pro provide your name and address, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Will Steiner, 3232 Shorewood Drive, Oshkosh. So um, Bridgeview, on behalf of Bridgeview Holdings, we're withdrawing the offer uh, for the vacant land um, because uh, our, our execution of the plan, um, the proposed concept plan, which we shared a month ago or six weeks ago, we wouldn't execute that immediately. So if there's other interest or offer from other people in the meantime, we think that would be appropriate. We are not going to um, finish the renovation on the other building as quickly as we had planned because the costs are much, still much more than our budget, even though we've again reduce the scope of work on the 851 South Main Street building. Um, the uh, tenant, uh, Oracular or Smart IS, is uh, in due diligence for a different building, 1302 South Main Street. And at 1302 uh, South Main Street, which is Davis Painting, um, we would consider the same, uh, almost exactly the same types of uses, that is, parking lot with uh, outdoor market space and um, that building is fairly large 15,000 square feet so um, it could accommodate some indoor type shop space market space too in addition to the office space for um, oracular which in theory for us is temporary so the other building 851 South Main Street would be finished I know that was Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, and I, I think I followed this, but so Oracular's considering a different location. So then would you have tenants for the building that you're rehabbing now? So, so Oracular's gonna move into a different location because they're, they, we've leased their current location to someone else within two, three months. So we, they have to find a different location. And 851 South Main Street requires months and months of work. Uh, even if we were to execute fully, I mean, it would take six to nine months. So um, on 851 South Main Street, what we're going to do is do all of the exterior improvements, this, the site work, um, we're gonna clean up the exterior of the building, sandblast or media blast the outside and, and seal the building, com finish the parking lot and all the landscape so it looks great. But the inside will still be a shell. Um, and then we will, continue our process to find other tenants to occupy the rest of the building with the strategy of oracular still taking 
um, a portion of that space. In the meantime, um, with much less work, they can move into 1302 South Main Street. Uh, 1302 South Main Street, it, uh, that address is also uh, surrounded by three streets, and it's about two and a half acres. Um, it's ironically also the entrance to Pioneer Drive, I mean, going to the east too, so kind of the south end of the district. It's not included in the um, Sawdust District properly. I mean, I don't think it's part of the TIF District or some of those things, but it's close. It's immediately south of the arena. What is our cutoff on the sawdust southern border? Uh, the sawdust district does have a section that goes further south. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the cutoff is, but he's right. The TIF district is just for the arena. It does not include the Davis Paint property. Mm -hmm. And then, can I ask a clarifying question? Would would Mr. Steiner be interested in the vacant lot the RDA owns once the rehab of the uh, the newer oracular yeah, building would yeah, be done? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, we're still quite interested in it, but I don't want to be in a situation where we own another property which nothing is happening with. I mean, I don't. We don't want to just tie it up for mm -hmm. buy a property and just sit on it. So if somebody else has some great use for it, a brewery or whatever, that would be good for everybody. And we can figure out our parking issues as they come along. Do you anticipate Oracular occupying uh, eight, the 800, 802, 815? 815. The, the big building? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, we're, it could be as soon as next year, but... Um, I mean, these projects seem to take much longer than we anticipate them taking, and that building particularly because it needs so much work. Okay, so next we need a motion and a second to discuss 1929. We, we had the motion to put it on the floor, did we? No. No, we, didn't. we moved it out of order. Withdraw. Yeah. Do we have to withdraw? So do we have to approve the withdrawal of this one? You do because technically your meeting has already started, so you guys should approve the withdrawal. Right. I think we make them buy it. <laughs> 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 so then, actually, Lynn, what you're saying is they should make a motion to approve it and then deny it. No, just make a motion to withdraw it from your agenda. Oh, okay. I'll make a motion to withdraw 19-29 from our agenda. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? We take the roll then on withdrawing 19-29 from the <coughs> agenda. Elder? Aye. Hens? Aye. Blasky? Aye. Ponick? Aye. Plumary? Aye. Motion carried 5-0. All right. Next, then we will go back to 1928, the approved option to purchase a vacant property on South Main Street between mm -hmm. 7th Avenue and 8th Avenue for Jeff Fulbright. Have anyone here to speak on that item? Okay. So I'll need a motion and a second on 1928. I'll move 19-28, approve option to purchase vacant land on South Main Street. I have a second. Second for discussion's sake. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> discussion. <laughs> this will be fun. <laughs> May I ask Mr. Davis a question? Um, it would be my understanding that in order for uh, the property to be uh, transferred that we w the city would need to provide an environmentally clean site is that correct uh, n not always I mean we've certainly sold land as is and mm -hmm. that's usually the goal that I would have on a site like this uh, mm -hmm. this site we know does have contamination mm -hmm. uh, we haven't fully characterized that and we haven't come up with any remediation plan at this mm -hmm. time so we really don't know what the, um, the brewery's thoughts are on the uh, remediation issue. No, I don't know anything about that. Right. But we would be talking about a substantial amount of money. Uh, uh, 
history's any lesson, it could be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. When you look at the usage versus versus oracular or smart asses usage, a, a parking lot wouldn't have the same level it, of remediation. It would cap it. Yeah, so it'd be a different correct uh, cost, uh, probably. Yes. Right. And our so, experience. So my, I have a question because uh, you know my lack of understanding here. Um, the option is that he would have until, or they would have until July 16th, to then make a formal proposal. Correct. Mm -hmm. Offer the purchase, right? Of the purchase. And at that time, if they wanted it to be cleaned up before they purchased it, we'd have to decide mm. whether or not we would do that. Or we sell it as is. Well, are we selling it for a nominal sum anyway? Uh, well, the option was yes, for a dollar. For a dollar. The option was the option. Oh, right. Right. So I, I'm thinking it would be part of a development agreement that would have to be entered into because it is a redevelopment area. So to, for anybody to develop on the site, there would have to be a development agreement that they'll, you know, the investment would be X dollars. Um, are they cleaning up or whatever? And if there's going to be potential TIF assistance or anything? which Mr. Fulbright, I believe, indicated at the last meeting. He wasn't sure of at, as of yet. So does the $150,000 appraisal that's referent take into account the contamination? Yes, it does. It's more of an unknown, and it really depends on the nature of the development. As Mr. Belter pointed out, the, a parking lot is very easy to cap, whereas if you put businesses or residents on the property the, the standards are higher for the cleanup does the uh holder of the option have any requirements to uh share any data with the city if they take uh steps to understand the environmental cleanup calls uh, uh, let's see i would say we have in the past um i think that's what our standard access document agreement. says well there will also be an access agreement that'll have to be can be a condition it can be a condition that that's information yes. shared with mm -hmm. the city yes. so it that may be worth considering if he's going to take the steps to find out information in the site that would be valuable to the city yes possible so there is another piece of property on Main Street yes directly uh, across the street right um, do we know the condition of that soil and it's contaminated as well. Oh, okay. So, uh, and that wouldn't necessarily be a better option for them. No. Okay. Unfortunately. So, <clears throat> I think what it comes down to then is, given that the other offer was withdrawn, and this is one that's on the table, are we okay with giving until July sixteenth, twenty twenty? with that option and leave those other discussion points to the development agreement? And access agreement. And I, access agreement. I prefer to consider maybe adjusting that to March to give a six month time frame from say this point of or, or <coughs> April. So that depending on just six months basically. Okay. Would no you more. like to make mm -hmm. a motion to that effect? Well, <laughs> well, since you brought it up in yeah. discussion, mm -hmm. I think we can discuss it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I mean, is anybody just... opposed? I mean, I guess I okay. can't say that, right? You have to do the vote then. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so discussion on changing the terms? No, it's about the whole project. Um, keep in mind, if you're only looking at six months, if his due diligence would have to potentially also require drilling. Drilling is sometimes very difficult during the winter with frozen ground. Just the Thank point. You. No, that's a, that's a, that's valid. Thank you. Purposes of discussion. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Hints, you look like you'd like to bring this forward. Well, thank you. Um, 
Uh, frankly, I think the whole proposal as we know it right now is way too risky for the for the city to uh, seriously consider it. Now, that, that would not would not rule out <coughs> filling in uh, you know a lot of the answers before we consider it. But as we stand right now. Uh, I just do not feel comfortable about moving this along given what the potential environmental liability of the city is, the fact that we're uh, you know, getting essentially nothing for the property. Um, I don't think it's a good deal. I also was around when uh, the city a long time ago, before Allen, was thinking about the old Five Rivers project. And, we all knew from the very beginning that that wasn't going to float, but we just bounced it along, you know, on a wing and a prayer that something was going to work out. And I don't think that's good policy. Well, and I and I agree with you, and I agree with Lori. There, there are many places that that this can go in the Sawdust District. Yeah. He only needs, you know, two acres. He's going to. It's, if it's thirty thousand barrels of beer, that's a that's a manufacturing plant. Do I I don't know if I really right. want it right next to whatever the oracular building turns into and that close to the Main Street uh, River Walk. So I probably would rather push it further south um, if I could. And and to your other point, you know, I remember the Five Rivers project very well. Um, we ned we never had any financing proposal that was firm to back up that fifty million dollar request. Uh, similarly, I'd rather wait for some financial uh, assurances here before we went forward too far. Um, I, and I, I don't really see the harm in giving an option until July 15th because there's nothing else that I know that's in the works right now. Um, if he does the environmental and finds it clean, that adds value to the city's parcel. So I'm, if we want to do the option, I'm okay with it. But, I, but certainly I agree with, with Steve. And I agree. I, I would say if we have people clamoring at our doors for that property, but we don't right now, and right. and we do have the other property right across the street. If somebody does want a similar location, mm -hmm. that we could, you know. Well, and we didn't factor in. We we deferred this last time because we were getting a sawdust district master plan that was due in September. Um, that's not going to come until another month or two, mm -hmm. Alan. So that right. was. I, I really don't want to do anything until I have the whole master plan in front of me. But you would be okay with the option? Oh, yeah, because we there's going to be a lot of moving parts in, in that uh, Oshkosh beer project, so you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to take the option. Or does it make sense to consider laying it over until we have the Sawdust District plan? Well, that certainly was the intention but originally. I've, yeah. I've, I've seen drafts of the Sawdust District plan, so I know the consultant is working on it. It's just not ready for prime time yet. So we're getting very close. I'd rather look at the whole concept than bits and pieces before I have the concept. In general, that's a good idea. Well, call the question. Right. So, going back to 1928, option, approve option. We have no further discussion on that. Uh, please take the roll. Belter? No. Pence? No. Lasky? No. Honick? No. Lamary? No. Motion denied, 5 0. Next do we need to do anything about? Waiting for the plan, or are we just denying it altogether now? I think we're denying, denying we're just we're denying. Denying. at this time. Uh, Not they can resubmit. Okay, yeah, exactly. We know the project participants. If they need land, we'll get them. I mean, it's not as well as Mr. Steiner or any interested party. Okay. All right. We'll turn it over to Mr. Davis for the executive director's report. Thank you. Uh, I did include the. Uh, acquisition dis disposition policy uh, if you recall we were working on that this earlier this summer and the uh, council had a workshop about this back in August I've included the flowcharts that staff has drafted 
Uh, it seemed pretty well received at council and the direction was to bring this forward for council uh, approval in October so that's what staff is working towards at this point in time uh, just to highlight a couple of the, the points uh, the RDA is involved with a couple of the channels here depending on whether it's in a redevelopment district or block grant funds are being used so I wanted to highlight that that the RDA does have a role to play in uh, a couple of these different uh, uh, processes uh, but sometimes they wouldn't be depending on the funding source and the nature of the project because you don't typically get involved with industrial park or business park type of transactions. So just wanted to highlight that, that this is a, attempting to cover just about every situation the city has. Uh, the RDA has several situations that they would act in, but not all of them. And I'd be happy to answer any questions on the the draft policy at this point who changes the plan if you want to go in a different direction or re-strategize or focus more on something is that is that the planning department recommending to us a, a different direction uh, well the RDA has uh, uh, worked with with staff and I think council over the years to change direction in some instances when I first got here they were doing very little residential they started saying we need to do more residential type projects for the spot blight elimination uh, so that was direction that we've gotten and mm. I think that was a combination with the other neighborhood uh, efforts that we've been uh, undertaking over the last several years uh, if something else would come along uh, we can certainly get policy from the council and RDA can bring up policy uh, that staff could follow up on uh, so I think it's more of a collaborative thing uh, when it comes to what the priorities should be based on council agenda and RDA agenda. They are two separate bodies. <laughs> it's nice when they're in, in sync with each other, that's for sure. And since council uh, does hold the purse strings, it's always good for council and RDA to be on the same page when it came to that comes to that I'm just a little confused on the arrows that say no um, so does that mean that the council would actually approve it first uh, RDA has to approve it first and then it goes to council so just as an example tonight the 1124 high that's on RDA agenda this week and it'll be on council next week in theory council could deny it okay. council denied it that's the no that's the no, no. okay and so then it goes back to it could come forward to the RDA at some other so it's kind of like a decision tree that's what you're showing yes, yes. okay got it same thing with the CIP right yep um, I guess just kind of a procedural question here though does everybody have a definition that you're a working de definition of blight for us to make those findings that we're operating off of um, I know that's been some discussion from time to time on council are it may be in our handbook perhaps <laughs> <laughs> so I just Mind you, you have the, the yes so there's kind of a lengthy description of that based on statute but just wanting to double check everybody's got that available it's pretty wide ranging when it, it comes to blight yes but we just had that presented to us at a previous meeting of about four meetings ago I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah we did yes yes yeah. okay all right that's all I okay and then uh oshkosh arena update i don't know if you guys want to talk about that <laughs> Perhaps, I'm guessing you do. Perhaps Ms. <laughs> Lawrenson would like to yeah. pick us off there. Um, just, I'm sure oh. all of you are aware, Fox Valley Pro Basketball filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. That's a reorganization. Um, I've been sending you some of the copies of the information that's been filed. The RDA obviously has some interest in this because you're a party to the development agreement and it's primarily because you are the owner of the property. Separately, the city the has land. an interest. Just to clarify, the, the, the land. land. yes. 
the um, the city has an interest in the TIF district payment and in we have um, bills outstanding for services and utilities and, and certain other things. So they have more of the financial interest. Um, originally, we this had been scheduled for a closed session. We had a closed session with the council and we got direction from them in relation to those kind of financial issues and we're, we're working forward on that. Um, the city has at this point filed two motions and I believe I sent both of those out to you as well. Um, there's a motion objecting to the debtor in, position, in possession financing proposal. Again, that was more something that the, the city council, we discussed with them and they directed. Um, and then there's a motion to assume or reject the development agreement. Again, there because one of your duties under the development agreement would be closing on the property. So this motion relates more directly to the, um, the RDA and your interest in the land. If they um, assume the, the development agreement, it's still not going to mean that we're going to close right away on this property. I, everything with the closing is kind of being put on hold be, while the bankruptcy and the reorganization kind of works its way through. Um, let's see. In, uh, there's some hearings that are scheduled um, at the beginning of October, and we expect our motions will likely be heard at that time. Um, overall, my office is working with outside counsel. We had Godfrey and Khan, who you might remember, helped us in writing the development agreement. They have um, also brought in some bankruptcy attorneys to assist us because this is a very complicated um, bankruptcy. It, it's much more involved than some of the other ones we've dealt with in the past. So. We needed a little extra, a little extra help with that, so we've brought in some bankruptcy attorneys to help us with that. Um, with the RDA and the council, we're just generally looking for uh, your comfort level that the and the the council was in agreement with this, and the mayor can address it if she'd like to jump in, but that there are a lot of motions, there are a lot of things being filed in this bankruptcy. We need to be able to react fairly quickly to some of them. Some of them have really short deadlines for objections and that type of thing. So um, the council just generally reaffirmed their authorization for the city attorney in my role, working with outside counsel, working with the city manager, working with Mr. Davis as the executive director for the RDA. Um, to review those, respond appropriately. Um, always in the back of our mind, our primary goals, our intent is we want to support that project, we want to support the TIF district, and we want to support the, the Sawdust district. So when we, are, when we are evaluating things, when we're looking at how to move forward, those are our goals. That's what we've been keeping in the back of our mind, and we want to make sure that that the city, the RDA, but the pro, you know the project, the TIF district, the Sawdust district interests are f forwarded with whatever is going forward with that. So I don't know if the mayor, or Mr. Davis, have anything to add, but so you're looking from this body for direction, just a general consent that you're you're still okay with us. That's how we're proceeding. That. Those are the interests you want advanced as well. If, if anybody has any comments or anything else for me to consider in relation to that, and you can also talk to me separately, um, but at this point, that's, our, that's been our objective. That's the way we're moving forward. Um, I have been providing you a significant amount of information. I'm sorry to bury your inboxes, but there's been a lot of, I have saved you from some. There's been, <laughs> there have been things, uh, additional things that are filed. I'm trying to, trying to kind of weed through and give you the most pertinent or the most, the, the things that have hit the, hit the paper so that you are informed and, and just that you're okay with how I'm proceeding in that regard. I'm okay. All right. <laughs> but I guess my question is, um, where we are right now, I mean, the most immediate thing is the 
you know, the rules of the bankruptcy and now the latest, the filing by Balin, uh, essentially challenging those, some of the, those rules on the timing. Is that correct? There's, yeah. um, well, the, everything's going through the bankruptcy court. There's been things right. actually filed um, by multiple parties <laughs> in, okay. in the bankruptcy, yeah. and including us. We have um, the, first, the first kind of step that the developer has taken is they're seeking some interim financing. Right. And um, we, along with several other parties, have questioned that financing. Okay, and that, that was the... Um Correct, the, yep. the, the development agreement back then, and then also the city. And it's not that we're opposed to financing or, again, looking at the project. It's what kind of guarantee it's, we have behind it there, right? And then right. the other thing from the city is simply the unpaid bills. The, yes, the and that's more of a council issue, but, yeah. yeah. Can I ask about the, we've filed a motion to, to not pay the TIF payment back in back to Fox right. Valley Pro Basketball. What happens to that money at 400000 or so, either either way the ruling occurs? We've, what we filed was actually a motion telling asking the bankruptcy court to set a deadline for the developer to either assume the development agreement and tell us, yes, we still want to keep the development agreement in place and here's how we're going to move forward, here's the guarantees that we as the developer are going to continue to um, meet our obligations under that development agreement, or are you intending to reject the development agreement? So uh, once, once that's decided, then we would come to you and say, here are the options in relation to you know, the funding. But, to, we're almost putting the cart ahead of the horse right. to jump jump ahead of that motion. We need to know what their intent is, and um, you probably have to escrow that four hundred thousand in any case because it's TIF. It's a well. It's just it's in the, it's, the TIF, it's sitting in the account twenty eight account right. Yep. right. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much when, for that update. Oh, sorry. when's the next hearing? When's the next? Is it, there, um, the next headline, I should ask. <laughs> <laughs> that could be any time. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, there are, there's been a lot of activity okay, in this one, so, um, and uh, multiple parties, so it's, it's, the next headline could be any time. Did we get the a next copy hearing of the, is scheduled the first week of October that, that I'm aware of. Did we so. get a copy of the Chapter 11 filing that was supposed to be filed on Monday? It was supposed to be filed on the 9th, and then they extended that to the 16th? The creditor list, I did send that in an email to you earlier this week. Well, they had a, an asset and liability and a cash flow statement as part of their Chapter yep. 11? Yep. Okay, I'll have to dig deeper into my email. Yeah, it should be in the email okay. that I sent, so okay. hopefully it went through. I sometimes have problems with the city's email system that it strips attachments if they're too large so if it did not go through just let me know because i will get it to you separately but i did receive it so okay okay oh, the list okay. of investors but i don't know that i saw more than that there was a listing of all the creditors, creditors. and how much oh. each creditor like and and all assets list and of all liabilities assets. were also on that yeah. same attachment mm -hmm. okay yeah. four or five attachments on either yeah. and it was so just if there are week. Uh, early this week yeah. if, if there are more specific questions because we still have a closed session and mr davis uh remaining okay. updates and a budget hearing at five if you guys have more um questions you, can you are more than there. welcome to come and visit me hmm? all right all right thank you very right. much okay i'll try to go through my executive director's report as quickly as possible uh, I can tell you that we're working with Habitat and GoHNI on the Congress Field uh, Neighborhood Association. That's the next location for Rock the Block. And we'll continue looking for blighted, uh, blighted scattered sites potentially in that neighborhood, as well as our other uh, funding programs that we can use in the Congress Field Neighborhood Association in concert with the, our partners. A couple of items to highlight maybe on the uh, South Shore uh, redevelopment area. Uh, the consultants are very close to having a sawdust plan uh, drafted so that we can review that. 
Uh, as I said, they they have a draft that staff is reviewing, and I expect that'll be happening in very short order. Uh, let's see, Morgan District, you kind of know about Pioneer. The TIF plan was approved at Plan Commission. Uh, I, I want to say a week and a half or two weeks ago, and the TIF plan will be in front of Council next Tuesday on the 24th. Uh, bad news on the river walk from Pioneer Drive from Main Street to the railroad tracks. Uh, we did not uh, qualify for grant funds for construction in 2020. So we will have to look at other uh, means to construct that in 2020 or we'll have to wait till the next funding round uh, in 2020 for construction in 21. So when you said that you don't didn't qualify I, th I guess I read someplace that they didn't give out any money this year or just to us they gave out other money oh, okay. I don't remember the awardees list I I haven't seen it yet I think there's they were still working on it um, it's just there were a lot of large applications First requested well see it said we unfortunately other several years ago uh, I guess the reason I misunderstood then is says unfortunately Wisconsin DNR did not award any grant funds for 2020. Oh, for us. Oh, for us. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah, just for us. I thought we saw that yeah. wasn't no, so bad. They, they awarded it to other communities, <laughs> okay. just not to us. Okay, got it. Not to Oshkosh, we the most important awarded, applicant. Yeah. <laughs> well, these, there's a road there. It's not like there's still a road <laughs> that you can walk on, right. and a sidewalk. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're executing the development agreements for parcels H, I, and J in Marion with the Merge Development Group. And we still are on track to build the trail through Lakeshore. Uh, I don't know if you heard the details of the contamination and the poor fill materials that we found, but that unfortunately delayed the project and added some costs that the council recently funded the additional costs. So if the weather cooperates, they'll be back on the job site next week working on that. That's all I have, Madam Chairman. All right. Thank you. Any questions on that? I have one quick question, and that is just back on the Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative um, as it relates to the strategic plan update for our neighborhoods engaged, the one Oshkosh. Yes. Is that coming forward soon? Or? Uh, let's see. The, the strategic plan goes through, I believe, 2020, so I'm sure we'll work on updating that in 2020 to take effect in 21. Okay. And so it's still active. Yes, it's still okay. active. And staff monitors that regularly, and we meet with the partners on an annual basis to see where they are. Next, uh, we'll uh, take a motion to go into closed session. Well, I'd like to make a motion to convene into closed session related to the negotiation of land for slum and blight elimination in the 300 block of Pearl Avenue pursuant to section 19.85 para 1 para e to discuss bargaining options strategy and parameters where competitive bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second by Sue. Any discussion? All right, then we are now in closed session.